So um, I do want to kind of shift gears because cold water immersion is an area that you have done research in. And I'm personally interested in the neuroendocrine effects of cold water immersion. A lot of physically active people are interested in using cold water immersion for recovery, for enhancing, um, sorry, for a blunting uh, inflammation of the muscle. But you've shown, and maybe you can talk about your study, about you know doing cold water immersion immediately after resistance training can blunt some gains. Do you think the timing of cold water immersion can affect you know, whether or not you're going to blunt those gains. Because you want you want to keep doing those cold showers? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing those as well, so. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, with uh, looking at heart rate variability and stuff like that, I mean, I've been experimenting uh, with that myself as well with the cold showers and the, the ice baths. And, but, of course, uh, from a muscle uh, perspective, um, Nothing makes sense on recovery after exercise that cold would actually be helpful. So um, we did a study where we used the intrinsic label protein so we could track where the protein goes uh, acutely, but also more long term. And after exercise, we put one leg in cold water and one in thermal neutral water. And we saw that the leg in the cold water did not get the same stimulation of muscle protein synthesis. And basically, less of the protein would actually go to the leg, less perfusion, less stimulation of muscle protein synthesis. So from at least for the first uh, six hours, it seems evident that acute recovery, recovery in the light of muscle protein synthesis, glycogen restoration is actually compromised by the, by the lower temperature. Part of that is that because you inhibit perfusion, but also, of course, all the enzyme and all the process activity in the muscle is also reduced by a lower temperature because that, that's just what happens. I was surprised that uh, I thought like, hey, maybe then you compromise that acute recovery phase, but then you maybe catch up later on when you warm up. So that if you do this over two weeks, it doesn't make any difference. So we continue doing that for, if I'm not, uh, not incorrect, over two weeks, with six training sessions. And so it's six training sessions with only up to about 15 minutes of cooling. I thought that could never have an effect over those full two weeks. And if there's an effect, we wouldn't be able to pick it up, but we did. And over those two weeks, total protein synthesis in that lag that received cooling compared to the other was actually less and actually measurable less. So that six times 15 minutes cooling over two weeks 14 days, 24 hours, had a negative impact on the stimulation of muscle protein synthesis. My only conclusion is, is that the reconditioning is therefore not optimal. Now, if you still want to do the cooling, now the shower is only short, but would it be uh, good to do it at different times? I think so. Um, why is everybody then still doing the, uh, the uh, cold water immersion after exercise? I think it came from, from sports where you basically hurt the muscle, where there's massive inflammation, where there's uh, blunt force trauma on the muscle, that actually you, you, you basically support the muscle in recovery, not the, recover, not the reconditioning, but basically m minimize the damage. And then people started using it for other sports as well. But I think for resistance training, or for uh, endurance training, it's you shouldn't be using it, at least not acutely after the exercise session. And you said something that I picked up on. You said for six hours. Do you think that if you do cold water immersion and you wait six hours after resistance training, that you would uh, still affect muscle protein synthesis? I mean, pure speculation. Or I think it would be less. Um, so... Um, but then the, the other question is then uh, for your... Um, um, your other benefits, whatever they are, of course, there's also a lot of discussions on that. Do you need to do that 15, 15 minutes? Um, is it better to do it the other day? Um, at least the first few hours, I think, are essential for the muscle. I would stay away from the cold there. Is it okay to do it then in the evening or the next day? I would favor that as opposed to the other one. Mm-hmm. So waiting for recovery days. Now, you mentioned endurance training, but 
Um, you know, there are studies showing that cold water immersion can enhance performance and endurance trainers and also enhance neuromuscular function. You're talking about that. Yeah. Probably not as – these people aren't, you know – you know, the, the 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 resistance training is really stimulating muscle. So I'm wondering if you could do it perhaps on an endurance training day, maybe wait a few hours again. Um, I, don't, I think we would have found exactly the same thing if we had done endurance training. Uh, so this was resistance training. Uh, I think if we had done endurance training, you would also have less of your amino acids that you ingest go to the muscle. I mean, a lot less of all this kind of work has been done after endurance training, but it seems to follow all the same principles. It's just the different sets of proteins that are being expressed to a greater or lesser extent after endurance versus resistance exercise. But they're also responsive to nutrition, and so they should also be responsive to blood flow to the muscle. So I think it doesn't make a difference for endurance or resistance-type exercise. The studies that I've seen is they either show no effect and if they show effect, it's studies where it's not endurance exercise. It's actually high-intensity intermittent-type exercise where there's also a huge damage effect and inflammation. And I think there it can have a benefit to dump, dampen that down. And then acute performance afterwards is less compromised. But that's something else than optimizing your training reconditioning. Right. Yeah. So you're you're talking more at the elite level where they're really like the rowers or the you know these these runners that are that are you know they're in, incurring more damage on their muscle. Um, so if the the cold water immersion is causing vasoconstriction, it's it's pre preventing the muscle perfusion, right? Um, the question is how long does that last? So the norepinephrine is the hormone that is regulating that, as you know, and that does go up even after just you know two minutes in cold. So the question then goes well. Uh, well, how long does that last? So, like, you know, is it an eight-hour response? Do you think it would be eight hours that it's it's going to be affecting? I have no idea. Um, in this case, I mean, temperature, at least skin temperature, was already quite normal, quite fast. But the response over over, over six hours was still visible. So, uh, I mean, these studies are hard to do because then if you actually would do it this way, I would like to take a biopsy at 2, 4, 6, 8, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22, and 24 hours. And of course, nobody wants to participate. Not even the older subjects in our studies are going to sign up for that. Or at the very least, it would be interesting to do a cold water immersion where it's not immediately after resistance training. It's, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that would be great. Six, that eight would... hours, maybe the next day. Um, if we would do that two week intervention study where you actually have the three sessions. And the and the the no the six training sessions and you have the six cooling sessions and then you have the six cooling sessions on the days that you don't have the training, so you have three treatments, um, six training sessions with cooling, six sessions with cooling on the other day, and only the six uh, six training without the cooling. Um, yeah, that's a huge study, but I mean I'll be interested to see what comes out after two weeks. Yeah, I guess I guess the question is is that you know. If you if you're if you're doing resistance training and you wait six to eight hours after that training, will that cold water immersion blunt your gains? You said maybe a little bit, maybe not. Um, it so, will likely be less if you do it on the uh, the opposite day. So, the, uh, so waiting just day. on a recovery day is is For what example. you think is best. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but I mean you I mean that's the the whole thing. We always focus on muscle, uh, but. Everything has to be optimal. I mean, it's the same as, oh, you can take creatine and you, you get stronger legs and you have, you have a higher workload. But then if you're a high jumper and you gain 1.2 kilos uh, simply also by uh, most of it actually water retention, you're, it's not going to improve your high jumping. So it's more than only muscle, of course. Uh, of course, yeah. 